This is Harul Muli Nadan, Assistant Professor from the Department of Aeronautical Engineering, Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology, Coimbatore. This video is about combustion chambers for engines and it contains an introduction to combustion chamber chemistry, combustion chamber process, classification of combustion chambers, construction and working of combustion chambers and factors affecting the design and performance of combustion chamber then flame stabilization, flame holders and flame tube cooling. Basically, combustion is an exothermic chemical oxidation process of hydrocarbon fuel. Every fuel on this planet mostly contains hydrogen and carbon. When it is mixed with appropriate oxygen and supplied appropriate heat, it burns. So when it is burning, it acts as an exothermic reaction, which means heat is being let out. So that let out heat is supplied to the air that is inside the gas turbine engine, so that the air expands and converts itself into a gas after combustion. So basically in combustion process, it supplies input thermal energy. So in uh, combustion chemistry, the carbon burns before hydrogen in the fuel. It is known as carbon preferential burn. And if hydrogen burns before carbon, it is hydrogen preferential burning. And the fuel is hydrogen and air is oxygen combines and produces hydroxyl compound. Then it is known as hydroxylation. The basic three components of a fire is heat, fuel and proper supply of oxygen. So getting out the heat on the other side, the fuel has to be mixed with proper amount of oxygen and that mixture we can classify it as rich mixture and lean mixture. If there is a large amount of fuel with respect to the oxygen it is known as rich mixture and if there is small amount of fuel with respect to the oxygen it is known as a lean mixture so why are we doing this mixtures we can see on the right hand uh, side corner of this uh, slide we can see there is a chart air fuel ratio and air mass flow when that parameters are taken and drawn a graph, we can see there is a weak limit and a rich limit. There is a weak limit and rich limit, below which it is known as the stable region where the fire will be stable, otherwise the fire will be. Now in the combustion process. There are five steps. One is injection of uh, the fuel, then atomizing and mixing, then igniting the air fuel mixture. Once the fuel is ignited, the flame has to propagate and the flame has to be stabilized inside the combustion chamber. Then cooling has to be done for the flame tubes due to um, structural constraints. Construction and working of combustion chamber, here we get into. But the construction of combustion chamber is based upon its requirements, combustion process, the components and working. So the factors affecting the combustion chamber design, or we call it the effect of operating variables. Those are temperature, air fuel ratio, velocity, carbon deposit and pressure. One, one can understand that in a gas turbine engine, the maximum temperature in the Brayton cycle is the turbine inlet temperature. Because due to structural constraints, we have to maintain that temperature in the designed value or else it will lead to various structural defects. So first factor that uh, affects the combustion chamber design is temperature. The second one is air fuel ratio. It is completely based upon the fuel which we are using, whether it is uh, 
liquid fuel or solid fuel or uh, hydrogen cells whatever fuels that we have on the planet every combustion chamber that we design or every vehicle is based upon the fuel and its combustion process such is the case for our gas turbine engine also then the next one is uh, the velocity the velocity of the flow that it is happening basically it is up to 0.1 to 0.3 mach number which is very very low and inside the combustion chamber it will be almost 4 to 5 meters per second um, the next one is carbon deposits once the combustion has taken place there will be a lot of carbon deposits that will be occurring on the walls of the combustion chamber so that also has to be taken into consideration and at uh, which pressure the engine is operating so based upon all these factors some of the requirements are laid out here that is the first one a complete combustion must be achieved maximum amount of fuel must be used in combustion and total pr pressure loss must be minimum because of the combustion chamber design and combustion taking place there may be pressure losses happening so that pressure loss must be minimum carbon deposits must not be formed under any operating conditions ignition must be reliable for wide range of atmospheric conditions because the sea level conditions and the cruising conditions are very different and throughout between these two conditions also the atmospheric conditions constantly vary the temperature and velocity distribution at turbine inlet must be controlled as i said earlier the brayton cycle's maximum temperature is turbine inlet temperature so the temperature and velocity distribution at the turbine inlet must be controlled the volume and weight of the combustion chamber must be in optimized limit we should not uh, increase the weight of the combustion chamber because in an aircraft weight is the most important criteria then reliability and a durability should be asserted a designed combustion chamber should withstand all the conditions it is operating in now the basic components of combustion chamber are casing diffuser liner snout swirler fuel injector and igniter which is uh, sketched out on the right hand side diagram in the working of uh, combustion chamber combustion chamber is split into three zones one is the primary zone then the secondary zone and the third one is the tertiary zone or the dilution zone so in the primary zone is where the igniter and uh, injector are present that is where ignition happens and in the secondary zone is where the flame is stabilized and dilution zone is where the flame is put out for one particular reason if the flame is not put out within the combustion chamber limits it will the flame will propagate even after the combustion chamber and it will directly hit the turbines and it will start affecting the turbine performance and the structural integrity of the turbine so in the primary zone we can see for the ignition to start about 20% of air is used then the rest of 80% of air is split between the tertiary and the secondary zones or together they are known as a dilution zones then injection process of combustion the first process is injection so injection of the fuel is done by the nozzle and swirl vanes swirl vanes introduce a vortex motion among the axis of the chamber so it mixes the injected fuel into the air that is supplied into the combustion chamber that is the purpose of the swirl vanes and Injector nozzles are designed as upstream fuel nozzles and other one as a vaporizer system. The working of combustion chamber, as I told you, the priority is split into primary, secondary and tertiary zones. In 
Now, it is the classification of combustion chamber based on flow. It is classified as reverse flow combustion chamber and straight through flow combustion chamber. The most predominantly used combustion chambers are straight through flow combustion chambers. And basically, in all the textbooks and uh, everywhere, combustion chambers are classified based upon the arrangement that is, can type, canola type, and canola. So, first we are going to see about the can type combustion chamber. So, this is the can type combustion chamber. You can see there are several cans arranged in a sequence. Inside every can, there is a combustion process happening, like how in a piston cylinder arrangement happens. This uh, can type uh, CC combustion will be happening into specific cans alone. The main advantage of this is uh, if any one can gets damaged, we can replace it easily and uh, little amount of mass flow can be used for proper combustion. But uh, one serious disadvantage in this type is uh, it has higher weight and compared to the other types. So let us see a simulation of how this thing works. So at first the fuel is injected and we can see how the particles travel during injection and uh, how it gets mixed and how the combustion has taken place and the particles move along. So the next one is annular type combustion chamber. In annular type combustion chamber, there is one single annulus where multiple point of uh, injections of fuel is happening and ignition points are there and it just burns like a burner. Simple design and the weight is less and uh, the pressure loss is also weightless. I mean the pressure loss is also very less. Here is an animation of how this uh, annular type combustion chamber works. one annular type combustion chamber or tubo annular type so it is a combination of uh, can type and annular type where the inlet is like uh, arranged as a can and uh, the exit is uh, similar to an annular type this also has a immediate weight between the can type and annular type So the factors affecting combustion chamber performance is pressure loss due to the geometry and combustion and combustion intensity and combustion efficiency and combustion state. And finally, uh, the important topics is uh, flame stability, flame holders and flame tube cooling. This is very important because the flame has to be continuously working for the cycle to be happening throughout the flight. So the flame has to be stable and to be continuously burning within its limits that is from the primary zone to the tertiary zone. It should not exceed its uh, orders and get into the primary. Then the flame holders. They are some uh, bluff bodies with sprillers where the flame is put into a particular position for example we can say an afterburner 
and flame tube cooling uses a wiggle strip method, convection film cooling and impingement cooling so that the combustion chamber even after uh, long hours of uh, working stays structurally safe. So that is all about combustion chambers. A very thank you to one and all. A very thank you to one and all once again. If there are any queries, please mail to arumulinathan.arrow at highset.ac.in or comment in the video. Thank you.